Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue with Tom Carpus. We're at Fieldstone in Greenville, Delaware, and today we're going to be talking about what else? Golf rules with the man, my favorite rules official, Tom Carpus. Good to see you again. Great to see you, Harry. And uh, it's great to be back here at beautiful Fieldstone. As I mentioned, Tom, we're going to be talking about rules, and now you've experienced in your new uh, position with the PGA Tour champions, rules official. You're out there on tour. You never thought you'd get to tour, did you? Well, it's, it's <laughs> been a it's been a great transition. I mean, I had 20 years at Kenneth Square Country Club, awesome. 22 years on the PGA Rules Committee, my volunteer job, and then now I'm my paying job is working for the PGA Tour champions. Still chairman of our committee chairman. through this year. It was a two-year appointment, so last year, and then one of the nice things is the PGA Tour champions let me remain as chairman for this year. So I've got six PGA of America events mixed in with my Champions Tour events. So some people call me the two-headed monster. So come 2019, January 1, no longer will you be chairman, but come January 1, 2019, we'll have a whole new set of rules. And that's why we're here today at Fieldstone. Yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting time, uh, probably for those that have been around rules a long time, a scary time, because you're going to have to relearn everything that you learned for all the years you studied rules. But it's been, it's going to be a real, uh, I think most of the changes, I think people are really going to embrace and, and going to enjoy them. Uh, the USGA has on its website uh, all the information golfers will need to know about these changes. And they've broken it into certain categories. For instance, ball at rest. Ball in motion, taking relief, areas of the course, which is sort of like what you were talking about there. Equipment, also uh, playing your ball, when to play during a round, and also uh, player behavior. Very collaborative. Uh, a lot of input from the public. Yeah, the from public. From committees, and the code is on the website, usga.org. Lots of videos, a lot of information. They can explain a lot better than I can. Uh, because they, they've been writing it. Well, hold that thought, because you are going to explain. Am I really? Better oh. than you think <laughs> for our audience here on Inside Golf. We'll be back with Tom Carpus, golf rules guy, here at beautiful Fieldstone, talking golf rules when we come back in a moment. Stay with us. Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at Golf. Com. Buy the First Tee of Philadelphia. The First Tee helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit thefirsttphiladelphia.org. Buy the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. Buy Jersey Man Magazine. It's a Jersey way of life. And buy Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street by the Haverford Trust Company. Quality is in our DNA. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professional. I knew I wanted to be like my dad and be a PGA member. Following him around as a kid, I would get to see the players. I didn't really know them, but they knew me because I was Davis's son. You know, we lost him too early. Coming up the 18th fairway at Wingfoot, knowing that I'd won the PGA Championship, and then to see the rainbow, and everybody associated that rainbow with my dad watching over me. I'd like to thank him for just instilling in me what it means to be a professional and be a PGA member. The best stories end in thanks. Share your story at thankspgapro.com. Welcome back to Inside Golf World Fieldstone Golf Club in Greenville, Delaware. Talking golf rules with our guest and host for all the rules, Mr. Tom Carpus. He is chairman of the PGA Rules Committee, also a rules official now in his new job with the PGA Tour Champions. All right, 
Let's talk about, we mentioned in our opening about the different categories of these rules changes. We're talking this time about taking relief. Now a ball lands here, we're in the fairway, this is the 18th hole at Fieldstone. And Tom, well, somebody's ball has landed here on a sprinkler head. What were the old rules and now what are the new options? Well, in today's world, through this year, what we said was if your ball had interference from this sprinkler head, you would find the nearest point of relief and drop within a club length. No near the hole, not in a hazard, not on a putting green. And I think everybody's pretty familiar with that. Uh, the nuance, the change will be, this will still be considered a one club length relief area. Uh, little difference though in measuring this one club length and radius piece of pie, it's going to be a fixed area. You're going to use, the, it's defined by the longest club in your bag excluding a putter. We'll define this one club length air relief area, we're going to call it. Okay. So when I drop the ball, it has to, to do three things. It has to strike the ground in the relief area. And this is the big change. It has to stay in the relief area. It has to stay in the one club length area. And then of course I have to play from within, I have to play it from within that relief area. Okay. If it rolls outside of my relief area, I'm going to redrop it. If it does it again, I'm then gonna place it. Okay, now we're talking about the placement. Traditionally, if I may have the ball, it's basically shoulder height. Good form, Harry. You drop Excellent. it, right? Yeah. Look at that, it stayed too within the one unbelievable. area. You get However, <laughs> starting in January. Here, I'll do it, I, I'm younger than I you I know are. you are. Starting in January, what's gonna happen with that placing the ball? Well, think of it this way. In today's world, we say stand erect, shoulder height, and drop the ball. And we have kind of this window, if you will, where our arm can go up and down a little bit. When is it too high? When is it too low? But we have a window. Okay. All we're gonna do now is change it from shoulder height to knee height. So the rules now are now gonna say, you're gonna drop it from knee height and it has to stay within my one club length relief area. Different in 19 will be if I drop it and it rolls and it hits my equipment after it struck the ground, if it stays within my one club length relief area, I'm going to play it as it lies. I'm not going to redrop it. Now, you might say, well, why did they go with a knee height? I think there's a couple things. One is many people wanted to maintain the randomness of the drop. Luck of the draw. I drop it, it's going to end up somewhere. A lot of people wanted to keep that in the rules of the game. I'm, I'm glad we ended up there personally. That's just my personal viewpoint. The other thing is from knee height, this will, we will have fewer redrops. So the game will move on a lot quicker. Just to review, today, shoulder height, stand erect, drop the ball. In 2019, knee height, dropping the ball straight down. It's not gonna roll as far, so we're gonna have fewer redrops, which will be a good thing. The big thing, though, is the ball has to stay within my one club length relief area measured by the longest club in my bag, excluding a putter. So that will be, if it got to the edge of my one club length, in this case here, I've got a driver. If the ball rolled to here, outside my one club length, I'm gonna redrop it. Redrop it, one more time at least. Hopefully it stays within our one club length relief area. You're ready to go. Play on. We're ready to play. And we'll be ready to talk about some other changes when we come back with Tom Carpus. We're in that Greenville, Delaware at Fieldstone talking the new golf rules. Back in a moment on Inside Golf. Everyone is looking for something. Consistency. Quality. Peace of mind. Found. The Haverford Trust Company. As long as there is fear, as long as there is curiosity, as long as there are undiscovered corners of the earth, and as long as there is willingness and desire, then you are capable of more. 
The BMW Championship is coming to Philadelphia September 2018. The top 70 PGA Tour players will be there. Will you? Welcome back to Inside Golf, talking golf rules with Tom Carpus, former head professional at Kennett Square, currently on the PGA Tour champions as a rules official, and also uh, in the waiting months of his career as the chairman of the PGA Rules Committee. We're at the beautiful Fieldstone Golf Club in Greenville, Delaware, and in this segment, Tom, we're going to talk about relief in a bunker. Tell us, what is the existing rule up until January 1st of 2019? Okay, so this ball unplayable uh, under the current code, if my ball were plugged under the lip, you can see that one there, or if my ball was right here. In the middle of this bunker. I'm the sole judge of whether or not my ball is unplayable, number one. Your partner or your, your competitor has no say it's in it. It's me. Player is the sole judge. So under today's code, my options are I can go back to where I played the previous stroke, stroke and distance under a penalty stroke. Um, I can find that ball right there and go back on the line, but I got to keep it in the bunker under penalty one stroke, or I can drop within two club lengths of where that ball is under penalty of one stroke. So that's today's rule. Starting in 2019, you will have those same options for one penalty stroke. But one very important additional option is coming your way if you're a newer player, high handicapper. And as you can see, this bunker on the 18th hole is pretty difficult. So what I can do if I want to, it's an option. Additional option is to come outside the bunker and take two penalty strokes and then operate under what we're calling back on the line relief. Uh, as defined, meaning I'm going to find a spot going back on the line. Today, some people refer to it as the flag line. Go back on the line, put a tee in the ground, there's my spot, and then I've got my one club length and radius piece of pie as my relief area, but I'm taking two penalty strokes to get out. Let, think about it. You've got this high lip, and if I think it's going to take me multiple shots to get out, and you know what? If I'm a high handicap player, why not? This may be a good option. It may not. It depends on who the player is. But the rules of golf are now going to give you this additional option to come out, taking two penalty strokes, drop it in that one club length relief area, and play on. All right, Tom, let's stay in the bunker and talk about loose impediments when you're in a bunker and what you will be able to do now as opposed to uh, what you've been able to do up until January of 19. Okay, the current code we have the expression hazards, which is bunkers and water hazards. Right. And you have the three prohibitions about touching the ground with your hand or your club, touching or moving loose impediments, lying in or touching the same hazard as your ball, and then also testing. We're not allowed to test, with some exceptions. The new code is going to break bunkers apart. We're going to treat bunkers one way and penalty areas another way, which I'm sure we'll get into later. But in bunkers, the, the changes now will be that you will be able to move loose impediments. So right near my ball here, I've got leaves, twigs, stones. I can go ahead and pick them out of the way. No problem. No violation. The other thing I can do is, and I'll use the expression, I can generally touch the ground in the bunker. Meaning like you, if, like I, was, you're doing right if now. I was leaning on my club waiting to play. And it's nowhere near the ball. That would not be a problem as long as I don't improve my, my position of my ball. So this is going to be okay. No problem here. Now there will still be some prohibitions. Obviously, we're not going to allow you to test. Get in there and, and take a bunch of practice swings and splash sand up onto the putting green. That's still going to be a no-no. Uh, the other thing you cannot do is, is, is um, touch the sand immediately in front of or behind your ball. So as I'm getting ready to play, if I'm touching the sand like this, That's once okay. I get to where I'm going, to where I'm putting my club behind the ball, now I cannot touch the sand immediately in front of, or in most cases, behind the ball. All right, we have moved out of the bunker and back onto the golf course. This used to indicate, Tom, the red stake, a lateral water hazard. Correct. However, starting in January 2019, this will indicate a penalty area. Yep. And what will be the options for the golfer? Yeah, the language of golf has changed, Harry. 2019. So now, if you remember, we used to have 
Yellow we called water hazards, red we called lateral water hazards. Now we, call, we have penalty areas, which could be marked by yellow stakes and lines or red stakes and lines. In the case of yellow, you've got your stroke and distance option or back on the line option for a penalty stroke. In this case here, we have a red stake, a red penalty area, so we're going to call this lateral relief. Our, so our relief area here is going to be two club lengths different from some of our one club length relief area options that we talked about before. So in this case here, I've, got, I've measured out my two club lengths. Remember, it's a fixed distance now. Longest club in your bag, except for your putter. That's going to determine our relief area. And when I drop it, knee height, ball must go straight down, and the ball must, we got three things. It must strike the ground in the relief area, it must stay in the relief area, and I have to make my stroke from the ball in the relief, relief area. area. There you go. There are just a couple of the rules changes going into effect January of 2019. We'll be back to wrap it up with Tom Carpus here at Fieldstone and go over in quick summation some of the other rules changes. Stay with us. More coming up on Inside Golf. Welcome back. Inside Golf now continues with teed off. And our panel today is at the Bluebell Inn in Bluebell, Pennsylvania, where they say you should indulge yourself in style. Right here at Montgomery County's number one dining venue. And joining us today here at the Bluebell Inn for teed off from the Philadelphia section, PGA of America Executive Director Jeff Surrett. Good to see you again, Good Jeff. Good to see you here. Thanks Chris for Gardner me. is the professional, the head pro, right down the road at the uh, Bluestone Country Club. Yes, sir. What, second year now? This is number three. Number three? Yes, sir. Boy, you look like you're just coming out of high school, I Chris. I appreciate that. Thanks for joining us. And Quinn Spitzer is the president, Golf Association of Philadelphia, and a member at Huntington Valley Country Club. Jeff, uh, Fred Ridley, who is the Augusta chairman, made an announcement during Masters Week about another pretty big event that they're going to be holding next year, and it's going to be a Women's Amateur Championship. They're going to have three rounds, but the final round is going to be played a Sunday before the Masters at Augusta National. That is quite a breakthrough, and uh, we've seen a lot of things happen there over the past few years, and this is another example of how I guess Augusta, first under Billy Payne, and now Fred Ridley is kind of being a trailblazer when it comes to announcements like this. It really is. You know, you can even roll it back to when they announced uh, the PGA, the USGA, and Augusta National um, reinvigorated the drive, chip, and putt. You know, so uh, you know when you look at when you look at what the leaders in the golf industry are doing, it's you know trying to trying to bring more people into the game, trying to bring more attention to the game uh, for everyone. So things like this uh, moving forward are just really good for the game period. Um, and having a venue like Augusta to step up and do something like that is off the charts. Yeah, you know, it's not that long ago, uh, Quinn, that we can remember when there were demonstrations uh, planned outside on Washington Road, outside the gates of Augusta National, because they didn't have female members. Uh, Augusta National has come a long way in a pretty short period of time. Well, you know, they had that real delicate balance between tradition and the future of the game. And when you go to Augusta, they will tell you, we don't have any rules here, we just have traditions. Interesting. Uh, but one of the things that's happened is you have somebody like Fred Ridley, who came as president of the USGA Executive Committee. And having come from that background, he recognized that Augusta had an important role to play in advancing the game. And all of us here at this table recognize you can't advance the game of golf unless you do something to improve the junior experience, to bring more juniors into the game, and you need to bring more women into the game. First Billy Payne in the junior program, and now Fred Ridley in the women's program, recognizes that Augusta can keep its traditions, but it does have an obligation to make a contribution to the game of the golf and growing the game of golf, and this is an outstanding example of how to do that. Yeah, do you think any other clubs now are sitting around, clubs of, you know, some iconic nature, name, whatever, tradition, and they're saying, gee, why didn't we think of that? And maybe it's time that they came up with a, a similar idea, not the same thing maybe, but to sort of match what Fred Ripley has done down at uh, Augusta. I don't know if clubs are looking at that, but I think all of the, all of the players in the golf industry are looking at that, you know, um, bringing, you know, bringing more attention to women in the game. You know, the, you look at the job that Michael Wan's done with the LPGA and, and bringing that um, into, you know, into this century and, and the attention that he's brought 
you know, then the, the PGA teamed up with the LPGA for the Women's KPMG PGA Championship that's going to be hosted at Aronimink in 2020. So um, you look at what all of the leaders in the golf industry are doing, bringing attention to, as Quinn was saying, juniors and women, uh, and really bringing the game forward. Yeah, it's going to definitely do that. And, uh, you know, the, you mentioned the earlier about the drive, chip, and putt. Uh, that has been a, a real success, I think. What was it now in its fifth year? It's hard to believe. Yeah, it's crazy. But, I mean, do you see little kids? Have, have you had young kids come up to you and say, hey, how do I get involved in something yeah. like that? Yeah, and that's exciting, too. I, I think every – I know for sure as a junior golfer, you know, how many times did I imagine making a putt on the 18th green at Augusta National? <laughs> to win the Masters, or at least, you know, and uh, now kids actually get to, to witness that. You know, it becomes reality, and, and, and maybe that was just young boys at one time imagining winning the Masters at Augusta National on the 18th, but now it's everybody. And you're going to have young girls thinking about winning a tournament now at Augusta National's 18th green, and I think that's just really exciting. Yeah, and, and Gap, I'm sure, is always looking ahead to different. I know you run so many events and tournaments. I mean, we talked earlier uh, on a previous teed off about the gap matches and things like that. But as a group, are you always looking to enhance the experience for members as to what can be done to uh, put you know, golfers on a different type of stage? Well, we're working very hard in terms of both junior golf as well as women's golf and all other aspects of golf in terms of our competitions. This year we'll go from 100 competitions last year to 130 competitions this year. We'll have the Junior Series in Central Pennsylvania, and that's going to be an outstanding opportunity to appeal to juniors. We just created a separate women's series that we put in the locker rooms of all of our member clubs to show the women the number of competitions in which they can participate. So things are doing very, very well in terms of trying to reach out to groups that probably could go ahead and get a little further down the road in terms of their participation in golf. And one more thing, we deserve a lot of credit here in Philadelphia for some of the things in women's amateur golf and women's golf in general. We had in the Philadelphia at Lancaster the most heavily attended, most successful U.S. Open for women uh, two years ago. Last year we had an amazingly successful women's amateur at Rolling Green. This particular part of the country is second to none in terms of the efforts that we're taking to advance what's going on in women's and junior golf. All right, maybe we'll see some of those uh, participants in those two events you mentioned on center stage at Augusta National next I'd year. like that. That'd be pretty interesting. Gentlemen, thank you, and we'll be back. More Inside Golf in a moment. Located in Bluebell, just a short drive from Plymouth Meeting, Bluestone Country Club offers a setting that's close at hand but feels like a world away. Bluestone offers a championship caliber golf course, practice facilities including a large driving range, separate chipping and putting areas, and a staff of PGA professionals. At the Country House at Bluestone, you'll find excellent food, superb service, and an outstanding setting. Their expert staff will assist in planning your next event, whether it's a wedding or simply a lunch and dinner or cocktail party. Check out Bluestone's variety of membership options. Much more than a golf course, Bluestone is a community. where golf is more than a game. Hey, viewers of Inside Golf, have you heard about Jersey Man and Philly Man magazine? Published by ex-Eagles and Philadelphia Stars tight end Ken Dunnick, these magazines offer the very best in content on subjects of interest to men. Writers include Bill Line and George Anastasia. And you can increase your business by attending our monthly private parties as an advertiser. Call 856-912-4007 or email ken at jerseymanmagazine.com for more information. Welcome back to uh, Inside Golf as we uh, get ready to wrap up this segment and show on the rules changes going into effect January 2019. We're on a putting green here at Fieldstone Tom, and let's talk about there are some significant changes on what you can do on the putting surface now. Yes, uh, uh, for many years people have wondered why can't we fix spike marks. So the new code will do a couple things. One, line of putt will no longer be a term. We're just going to deal with line of play and you'll be able to fix almost any damage on the putting green including damage 
from spike marks, animal damage, and the like. The other thing you'll be able to do is touch your line of play, provided you don't do anything to improve it. Um, and, and there'll be some examples that'll be outlined in the book that will talk about that. Can you touch it with your hand, with your club? Anything? Yeah, you're going to be able to do that. Right now, if you touch your line of putt, uh, the rules prohibit that. So now we're going to say, again, you can fix almost any damage and you can touch your line of play. It also applies to a caddy. So if you're looking for a read from the caddy, he can take the flag stick and, and touch correct. the green. That is correct. He can take his hand and, and touch the putting surface. Correct. He just All can't right. leave it there during the stroke. Right. Now, talking about leaving it there, you can now, starting in January, leave the flag stick in. Because it used to be no penalty. So I can just go up, tap my ball in, no penalty. Boy, they're making this game easier. In the essence of maybe making a better explanation, your advice is to go to the USGA's Absolutely. website, right? USGA.org, and of course, as we get closer to 2019, they're really going to ramp up the videos, a lot of educational materials, which I think will be helpful to everybody, committees, golfers in general. So go to USGA.org for more information. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf from Fieldstone in Greenville, Delaware, with my good buddy Tom Carpus. Thanks for taking time out from a very busy schedule. My pleasure. I'm Harry Donahue. Remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up. And also, remember, golf rules. See you next time, right here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at montcogolf.com. Buy the first tee of Philadelphia. The first tee helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit thefirstteephiladelphia.org. Buy the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. Buy Jersey Man Magazine. It's a Jersey way of life. And by Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. By the Haverford Trust Company. Quality is in our DNA. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia Section PGA. Experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professional.